Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, and today we're watching another video from Solakage, this one explaining Six Paths Sage Mode. Now, Six Paths Sage Mode, I feel like this is a technique that a lot of people absolutely love, that they think is absolutely cool, and the reason why we're going to be watching this is because I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions in the, uh, the Naruto fandom, or not misconceptions, but misunderstandings in the Naruto fandom, because a lot of people don't actually seem to understand what Six Paths Sage Mode actually is. And not just in relation to Naruto, but also, let's say, Madara and Obito and you know, other members of the uh, of the Otsutsuki clan. So we're going to be watching this video from Sakagi and hopefully he'll be able to clear up any misunderstandings that anyone has about what Six Paths Sage Mode actually is. So let's just go ahead. Let me put on my headphones. Let me check the volume and play. Yo, what's going on everybody? Swag Kage here, and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about Six Path Sage Mode and by extension Six Path Senjutsu. Now, I've already made a Sage Mode video, though if you haven't seen it already, you don't need to because the differences between regular Sage Mode and Six Path Sage Mode are both significant and very numerous. I can already hear quite a few of you asking, well, Swag Kage, what is Six Path Sage Mode? And my immediate response would be to say that it is the most busted ability in the entire <laughs> series. But if you're actually expecting an in-depth explanation, well, actually, yeah, just imagine the most busted ability in the whole series. And Although considering the latest events of the Naruto manga, it seems like that might not be the case anymore. In all seriousness, there are two ways to gain access to Six Path Senjutsu. One is through Six Path Sage Mode, which can be given to somebody directly from Hagoromo Otsutsuki, the Sage of Six Paths, but this only happens in very rare instances when Hagoromo deems somebody worthy of it. The other known way for a regular person to gain access to Six Path Senjutsu is to become the Jinchuriki of the Tintails, which, after setting aside the actual process of encountering the Tintails, can be done by performing a jutsu called the Six Paths Tentails Coffin Seal. However, sealing the jubi inside of oneself requires that a person has the Rinnegan, so, I mean, there's really no easy way to gain mm -hmm. access to this ability. Now, that's a good thing, because it's really strong. Like, <laughs> really, really strong. Now, there are practically no differences in these two types of Six Paths Senjutsu use. While Six Paths Sage Mode and the Six Paths Tentails Coffin Seal have radically different requirements, they produce pretty much duplicate results. There are practically no differences between the abilities this form gives Naruto access to and the abilities this form gives Madara access to. Naruto's power-up is a bit different from Madara's admittedly because of his ability to draw from the chakra of all nine-tailed beasts at once, but that doesn't have any real direct relationship with his use of six paths and jutsu. I know Madara gets a Rene Sharingan and can summon the god tree and a whole bunch of other stuff as a result mm -hmm. of becoming the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails, and that Naruto can use the powers of all nine individual biju and still enter his nine-tailed chakra mode, but those are all indirect results of the methods they used to gain access to six paths and jutsu, not effects brought about by six paths senjutsu itself. From what I understand, even the changes in appearance brought about by becoming the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails have nothing to do with a person's ability to use six paths senjutsu. On that note, I'd also like to clear up a pretty widespread misconception that this is Naruto's six paths sage mode, even though it's not. The only actual no. direct visible sign of six paths sage mode use is this right here. Naruto's eyes look the same as they do when he is in the sage mode enhanced nine tails chakra mode. The difference is of course being that he is no longer coated in a cloak of Kyubi chakra and that there is no pigmentation around his eyes. All of the other extraneous changes in a person's appearance are due to outside causes not directly related to Six Path Sage Mode. Naruto's yellow chakra cloak is due to his ability to enter Nine Tails Chakra Mode. Madara and Obito's respective resemblance to the Sage of Six Paths is due to their use of the Six Paths Ten Tails Coffin Seal, so on and so forth. So now that I've established that the abilities granted by Six Path Sage Mode are universally the same, regardless of who the form is being used by, let's get into what these abilities actually are in the first place. So obviously, first of all, a user of Six Path Senjutsu or Six Six Path Sage Mode will gain access to all of the benefits that a user of regular Sage Mode or regular Senjutsu will. And for those of you unaware, these perks include increased strength, increased speed, increased sensory capabilities, and the ability to use natural energy and Senjutsu techniques. Users of this form are also able to combine Senjutsu or natural energy with their basic Ninjutsu or Taijutsu <laughs> techniques in order to increase their effectiveness. Though of course Six Path Senjutsu takes all of this to a much higher level than basic Senjutsu does. While Naruto did have some some pretty good physical showings in regular Sage Mode, the power boost Naruto experienced after entering Six Path Sage Mode was unbelievable. For example, he was able to dodge the Sage Art Storm Release Light Fang, which is a technique said to move at the speed of light. His sensory capabilities were bolstered so heavily that he was able to sense the respective positions of each of Madara's Limbo clones, which are said to exist in another plane of reality altogether. And of course, all other users at Six Path Senjutsu have their abilities amplified to a similar degree. Awakened Madara, for example, was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with 
guy after he'd opened up the eighth gate without really trying all that hard, I might add. I'm pretty sure you guys get the idea. The first benefit provided by Six Path Senjutsu is an amped version of regular Sage Mode. The second perk is the ability to fly. It's not really <laughs> explained why, but yeah, they never... yeah, users of Six Path Senjutsu can fly with the use of Vuku Jutsu. Users of Six Path Senjutsu also have a ridiculous healing factor as shown when Madara flat out regenerated destroyed parts of his body and they gain complete immunity to basic ninjutsu attacks that aren't enhanced by senjutsu or natural energy in some way. I mean, it's borderline impossible for a normal person to kill somebody who has this ability. Furthermore, Six Path Senjutsu users also gain complete knowledge and control over all five basic elemental nature transformations, yin release, yang release, and yin yang release, and this ultimately manifests in their ability to use the truth-seeking balls or the gudo dama. I already briefly explained what these are in my yin yang release video. The truth-seeking orbs can be considered the pinnacle of ninjutsu, or the height of its physical applications, as they can nullify all ninjutsu and be applied in ways more numerous than any of the five basic elemental natures can. Suffice to say, these are pretty busted too, but I didn't explain every aspect of them in that video. So, okay, I will probably do an individual video breaking down how the truth-seeking orbs work in detail, but let me provide the best basic summary I can for you here in this video. Like I mentioned in my yin-yang video, the truth-seeking orbs are the pinnacle of ninjutsu, and I do not say that lightly. As they are composed of all five basic natures, yin release and yang release, if they are further imbued with yin yang release, their composition will allow them to nullify all ninjutsu with absolutely no exceptions, unless the ninjutsu these orbs come into contact with is enhanced with natural energy. Furthermore, truth seeking orbs push the concept of shape transformation to its absolute limit. Their shape can be altered, they can be merged together, split apart, turned into weapons. I can't really think of anything that a person wouldn't be able to do with the truth seeking orbs given to them by six path senjutsu. Their effectiveness is exacerbated by the fact that a user of Six Path Senjutsu has complete and total awareness of all of their surroundings at any given time, thanks to the sensory boost provided by this ability. So suffice to say, there aren't a whole lot of ways to counter the truth-seeking orbs, hence me calling them busted like pretty much every other aspect of Six Path Senjutsu. No, that's the extent of the capabilities provided by Six Path Sage Mode and Six Path Senjutsu, at least on a basic level, but like I mentioned in the Nine Tails Chakra Mode video, Naruto's QB Chakra Mode interacts pretty interestingly with Six Path Sage Mode. So let me get to explaining that like I promised I would. So first of all, Naruto's truth-seeking orbs don't seem to appear until he enters his Karama Chakra mode. I don't know why, they just don't. Neither does the Six Paths Enhanced Staff that he seems to carry while in this form, actually. Since his truth-seeking orbs never showed up after his battles with Kaguya and Sasuke, it's possible that Naruto can summon these truth-seeking orbs at will and only chooses to do so once he enters the QB Chakra mode. The only other reason would be that... Actually, I have no idea. See, the way Six Paths Sage mode... Yeah, it's... Th to me, that's really, really interesting because... For some reason, the truth seeking orbs never show up ever again. Neither do the stabs that he had when he first, you know, stabbed Kubi Chakra mode over his six paths sage mode. It's just to me, I always wondered, like, why that's the case because the truth seeking orbs are pretty, you know, like he said, they're pretty freaking busted. And it seems like after Naruto uses them, it seems like he used the last of them in his fight with Sasuke in the Valley of the End. But after that, they never show up again. And to me, I always wondered why that's the case. Like, I don't know. I mean, it could be just another case of Kishimoto realizing that, yeah, he gave a certain character, you know, too many broken abilities. And he just had to take him away, to take him away from him because otherwise... Yeah, <laughs> you guys are with the QB I've already ranted confusing. about this book many Naruto's times. Because Naruto's appearance when using both at the same time has varied, like... Greatly. Let me take a page out of Kishimoto's book and play a flashback to an earlier point in the video. Naruto's eyes look the same as they do when he is in the Sage Mode Enhanced Nine Tails Chakra Mode. The difference is, of course, being that he is no longer coated in a cloak of QB Chakra and that there is no pigmentation around his eyes. Now, I am going to place emphasis on the fact that I mentioned that there is no pigmentation around Naruto's eyes when he enters Six Path Sage Mode as opposed to Regular Sage Mode. What I mean by this is, you know that little orange stuff that shows up around mm -hmm. his eyes when he goes into sage mode it's not there when he enters six path sage mode see look now keep this in mind because it is important so when naruto first combines his nine tails chakra mode with six path sage mode it looks pretty much identical to kcm2 with a few noticeable differences for example the black under the coat portion of his chakra cloak is a lot more accentuated now and the yellow chakra surrounding him looks a lot more like a jacket than it used to but of course the most noticeable thing is the fact that naruto's face isn't affected yeah, by that's... the chakra cloak his face looks normal 
but the rest of his body is that was always a little bit chakra. weird so since he seems to use his I regular mean, nine tails chakra, i don't know if this was a choice by the anime or because yeah like remember the the, the the manga of course wasn't in color so we didn't know so maybe kishimoto never told them that you know um like the, the chakra was supposed to cover all of it and this was just a choice that the anime made and kishimoto just never corrected them except now now it is does cover all of them and it's just the normal kcm where his entire body glows yellow it's just i don't know to me like this was always a bit weird and i think this is what caused a lot of people to have misconceptions about what six pass stage mode actually is and why whenever naruto now goes into six pass stage mode and he's covered you know in the in that yellow glow just like he was when he first had kcm and kcm2 a lot of people thought wait does that does this mean he he doesn't have six pass stage mode anymore and the answer to that is no he still has it it's just that the anime and in some cases actually this was first a show to show even in the movie not not so much in the uh in the anime and yeah that's what caused a lot of people to have uh like confusion about you know six pass stage mode it's just Chakra mode in the last and Boruto yeah, Naruto here. the movie, a lot of people are under the impression that Naruto can no longer use his six path sage mode. But that's not true, no. and let me point out why. In a few instances in the Boruto manga and in the Boruto movie, Naruto has entered Nine Tails chakra mode and also entered sage mode. However, there is no pigmentation around his eyes that yeah. would otherwise signify regular sage mode, which leads me to believe I mean, it's kind of hard to tell with that picture alone, mode, but despite the fact that his his face is still yellow like it's really weird i know yeah, oh, yeah he also retains the ability to fly so i mean there's that too anyway when naruto first gains access to six path sage mode its interactions with his nine tails chakra mode are the most direct like i mentioned earlier the chakra cloak doesn't cover every part of his body and this is most apparent due and to also let me remind you here his eyes are yellow when they're supposed to be orange so i don't know it's just it seems like the anime made some changes and I think that's what caused a lot of people to be confused about, you know, six pass stage mode. That his face is left almost completely untouched. There are a few more subtle changes in appearance that I haven't pointed out yet, like the fact that his chakra cloak manifests horns similar to those on Madara's headband and those coming out of Kaguya's forehead. I mean, in all honesty, it just seems like the point of this transformation was to make Naruto look like an ethereal version of Ashura. I mean, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure this is something that everybody unanimously agrees about. There are a whole lot of Naruto Ashura parallels after Naruto takes this transformation. And I mean, with the use of shadow clones, he even uses his Karama avatar to create a battle avatar similar to the one Ashura used against Indra. But, uh, yeah, I think that about covers everything there is to say about this. Six Path Sage Mode on its own isn't actually all that complicated, but a lot of the stuff tied to it, like the Six Paths Ten Tails coffin seal, Naruto being able to draw from all nine biju at once, QB Chakra Mode itself, they're all quite a bit more complicated, and it makes explaining the concept of Six Path Sage Mode because of how heavily it's tied to these things a lot more difficult than it otherwise would be but uh hopefully you leave this video informed at least a little more informed than you were before you watched it thank you for watching the video all the way to the end as always it means a whole bunch to me more than i can explain and i hope to see you next time Till then talk to you later swaikage out bye okay so there it is uh there's six pass stage mode now i hope that this did clear up a lot of confusion when it comes to six pass stage mode although like i said a lot of that confusion did come from the anime specifically when it comes to uh, this in particular, you know, when uh, Naruto first, uh, you know, had showed us this form and his face was completely normal, but then you cut to the Naruto movie, which, yeah, the movie did come out before the anime and the, even before the manga started adapting it. Yeah, this is what caused a lot of people some confusion because you can see his face is actually yellow like it normally is whenever he activates KCM, QB uh, Chakra mode. But a lot of people are asking, well, wait, but before his face was normal, so does that mean he's, he doesn't have six pass stage mode anymore? And the answer to that is no, he still has it. Even though I think I remember correctly in one of the data books it said that Naruto, like, he still only has a small portion of the power that was given to him by the Sage of Six Paths, but still, he, he still has it. He can still access it. But, so, yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, that's I think that's it. Uh, that's the entire video guys. Uh, I hope again it cleared up any confusion and I hope that a lot of people understand have a good understanding as to what six pass stage mode actually is. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video and again if you have your own video that you guys want me to watch, 
Let me know about it in the comment section down below. And remember to like the video, share the video, and please subscribe if you haven't, especially if you're new. It'll really help out my channel with the algorithm. And remember to click on the bell icon, especially to let you be notified whenever I post a new video or whenever I go live. Thank you so much for watching and or listening. Remember to stay safe and take care of yourselves. And please join me for the next video. Bye for now.